now, welcome to the Shakedown Zone. We're giving you all the news, notes, and opinions from the world of racing. Even though it didn't get off on time or on the right day like it was supposed to because of the rain, the Pennsylvania 400 at Pocono Raceway did finally hit the green flag on Monday, though it wouldn't be worth the wait for a few of the drivers. Chase Elliott, who's had a really bad couple of weeks, appears to have gotten too close to Denny Hamlin's number 11 Toyota before his 24 car slid up the track and into Joey Logano in the 20. Joey had led 38 laps in the 160 lap event, but went to the garage to make some repairs. When he returned to the race, he would end up finishing in 37th. But the real obstacle in this race would be the weather, and when the fog and rain came, NASCAR brought the, t the red flag out and the teams to pit road on lap 132. Rookie Chris Buescher would end up making his final tank of Sunoco fuel last from lap 107 and gambled on staying out when the leaders would pit. Busher's small team, Front Row Motorsports, had not won in 118 races. Let's hear from the first time Sprint Cup Series winner. It's a pretty pretty wild day, um, a pretty, uh, pretty eventful weekend. A lot of things worked out really well there at the end and um, some things that I uh, thought were, were heading in the wrong direction when I uh, cut a rear tire down just trying to, uh, to avoid a wreck. And, you know, we, uh, we ended up in, in a good spot there at the end and, you know, made uh, Bob made a good call to hold out on the weather and, and make sure that, you know, we could uh, run as far out on fuel as we possibly could. And it worked out, uh, worked out really well. The weather got here just when we needed it to. Congrats, Rook. Really happy for him. Now, this win also makes Butcher, el Butcher eligible for the chase at the end of the season, which is only five races away. Currently, he's in 31st place, so he's only one spot away from being eligible. Currently, Casey Kane is on the cutoff line in 16th. Rookie Chase Elliott, even after a few bad finishes, is holding the 13th spot. Matt Kenseth starts the grid of those locked into the chase with the win and within the top 30 in the 10th spot. Kyle Busch sits in the 4th spot, even though he has four wins on the year. Brad Keselowski is in second with just as many wins, and Kevin Harvick leads the pack in first. And we have an update on the condition of Dale Earnhardt Jr. In a podcast earlier this week, Earnhardt said the concussion-like symptoms he's been dealing with following this wreck at Michigan in June haven't subsided. He says the symptoms have shown little improvement over the last couple weeks, so he's decided to sit out the next two races. Replacing him will be the legend who's been driving his car the last two weeks, Jeff Gordon. Gordon will race this weekend at the road course at Watkins Glen in the Cheez-It 355, and two weeks after at Bristol, they have a week off in between. Gordon, who turned 45 on Thursday, will make his 800th career start at the Glen, where he's a four-time winner. He's also a five-time Bristol winner. The Watkins Glen race will be this Sunday at 2.30 p.m. on the USA Network. And some video from this weekend's ARCA race that shows why this sport is so dangerous, whether you're in the car or part of the crew. Driver Gus Dean came off the track hot and into the pit lane, and his car failed to slow due to an apparent brake failure. John Head and Pedro Martinez were both hit and went flying over the car. Martinez walked away on his own power, but John wouldn't be so lucky. A GoFundMe has been set up to help him with some of his medical expenses. You can check it out at GoFundMe.com slash John House. We all wish him a speedy recovery. That's going to do it for Shakedown Zone this week. We'll see you back here next week with all the news and notes from the world of racing. Take care. Thanks, Matt. I love a good shakedown zone every day. <laughs> Blogger Nick Greisman was playing weatherman recently during a storm in Phoenix. The things got a little too real. Take a look. Guys, we're live in Phoenix, Arizona. It's raining really, really hard, and uh, I'm having fun. Is your phone okay? My phone is great. I just got a new phone. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to go underneath here. Whoa. Now the wind is going real. Whoa! Wow! That thing hit like right next to me. Woo! That was fun. What a cuckoo nut. I feel like he got up like Evil Knievel, like, I'm okay. Yeah, I'm okay. okay. <laughs> um, Nick was showing off the wind and the rain on the app Periscope when some lightning struck nearby. The phone got knocked out of his hand and he ran for cover, obviously. That is terrifying. I know. But I it's don't kind play of with it's, weather. I would be out there with him as well, Snapchatting. You would have been the one that got zapped because he was okay. <laughs> It was right by him, though, he said he would have been the one electrocuted. <laughs> My phone would have ended up on the floor. 
I would have been more concerned about my phone falling than that lightning actually striking me. Like, no, not the phone. <laughs> the millennial way. There's still more to come on Studio D. We're looking at the list of Rolling Stone's greatest singers. See who made the top 100, plus the dangers of sitting in the wrong salon chair. Watch out for the bad haircut viral when Studio D comes back.